Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm on the test server here. I'm able to see what we're going to get for the Adeline, uh, I guess, freebie champion. So we're going to check out what all of this kind of like phase one, phase two stuff looks like. We're going to check out the login rewards. We're going to play around with Adeline as well and see if we can get something cool happening uh, and see how some of her interactions work, that type of stuff. But yeah, Adeline Chase then. So uh, firstly... Whether or not you like this champion, yeah, and, and we'll find out, I guess, in the next half an hour or so or however long it takes. This change is super cool. I really like this. So there's kind of like seven day, you get gear, you get the champion, you then get a whole bunch of other stuff in days eight to 14, including her soul. It's really cool. So all of that's freebie. Yeah, all of it's free. And certainly, I mean, I don't know what this is going to look like for newer players yet, and imagine the gear level is going to be a bit lower. But I think everything in day 8 to 14 would make sense for a new player as well. So I think it's going to be just a straight replacement for basically everyone, which is really good. So I think good job, Ray. They're really trying to make these um, these kind of like free legendary events even more impactful. So super cool. I like it a lot. We then get into phase 2. So phase. Uh, let me just see what the little note says here. The Adeline Chase can be only be started before 9th of June. Those who haven't start, uh, those who have started it, may continue. But if you haven't, then it will disappear. So these are always kind of like just, just you know, a certain time period that they're available for. Those who have started it and haven't reached day seven before the 8th of July, basically won't get her, and it'll be replaced by Shaman, who's a usual epic champion. Note the Altar of Souls unlocks at level 42, so you might get the soul, but you can't use it yet. Um, the chase is divided into two phases. Phase one, you earn login rewards. All you've got to do is log in. Phase two, you need to earn chase points. And we'll look at that in a minute. You can only start chase to, uh, phase two after day 14. Once you unlock phase two, you will only have 21 days to complete it before it disappears. Right, okay, that's interesting. To earn all of the phase two rewards, you will need to earn at least 50 chase points a day. And you can earn a maximum of 75. So you can overflow... By like 25 a day we'll see what that looks like in a minute but you've only got 21 days to do it so you could miss a bunch of days like weekends and stuff uh providing you were hitting the max points to max it out right let's see what's going on phase two okay so phase two we've got more rewards here in terms of energy a bit of silver tiny bit of silver we've got though further soul unlock so you can get up to level five soul i will tell you now a five star soul on a damage dealer for example if they do this in the future for someone who would be a damage dealer, is massive. Like, four-star soul, actually, is where it starts to get juicy. Okay, so a one-star soul, two-star soul, you, you get a decent amount of base stats, and you start to get some of the soul abilities. But four-star is where the base stats really ramp, and, um, yeah, and it gets quite juicy. Also, I mean, I'm a late-game account, so I'm guessing it's not quite the same for an early-game account, but putting the accessories in here as well is also pretty cool. A uh, little portrait in there, which is not bad as well. Yeah, I mean, all I can say so far is double thumbs up. Like, I like this a lot. So let's see how you actually earn the points. Are we going to be able to see that? I don't know if I can. So all it's showing me is that there are flags in certain areas of content, but it's not showing me. I, I can't show you until I unlock this, unfortunately. So I guess all in all, it looks cool. I can't see what these different challenges are right now, but... Looks like there's going to be a big amount of of um, scoring, I guess, in Clan Boss. Maybe this means there's five challenges in here. Bit in Arena, bit in Faction Wars, and then Campaign and Dungeons. Again, I don't know if that's going to change if you are a newer player. But um, overall, cool system, great up uh, update and improvement over previous login champions, in my opinion. So let's take a look then and see what's going on with this chick. Uh, see some of her stats and stuff. Where is she? Where is she? Adeline. Here she is. So she's a force, legendary banner lord. She's got the floating book. Can we read a few pages? Ooh, not quite. Um, what's going on with this thing around her? I don't know what this is called. Oh, it's actually a hair. Okay. I was like, it looks like it's a ponytail, but not quite. It is a hair. She's kind of like, she's got to be careful, right? She's got to be careful of strangling herself with that because that is in a dodgy old position. She's got this kind of yellow woven into it. I don't know how. Um, she's kind of like a checkers board or like a chess piece, you know? 
Cool though, I do like the quill. Quill's looking good. Okay, so let's just quickly go through what's going on. In fact, let's check our stats. 105 base speed is good for a support. Uh, probably about the norm nowadays. Used to be like, wow, 105, that's amazing. But nowadays it's about where we would expect it to be. Good defense and okay base HP. Nothing too crazy, but she should be quite, quite good to keep alive. So we've got here A1, attacks an enemy, 50% chance of transferring one debuff from this champion to a target. Also 50% chance of stealing a random buff from the target. And that all books to 75%. It's an, it's an okay A1. It's nothing too crazy. It's not very influential in kind of like boss mechanics generally. Um, I don't think you'll be able to like push back a bomb or bomb, for example, because they're protected. Uh, I guess maybe it's possible. They do. Some champions you can, some you can't, but I, I think this is not the interaction to do it. So really, it, and it then comes down to like an arena type thing, you know, taking a buff, replacing it with a debuff. I guess clan boss, you could remove his decrease, or sorry, increase attack and maybe push back, you know, like a, a decrease attack or something or a poison back at him. Dragon, there's some, some kind of like benefits there for pushing back some of the poisons and stuff. It's an okay A1. A2, this is a nice heal. So 25% restores 25% of each ally's destroyed max HP. That's relatively rare to get as a skill. Particularly good in Hydra, particularly good in Sand Devil. Then heals all allies by 25% of this champion's max HP. The fact it's this champion's is good because you're controlling how much that heal is going to be by pumping her health. So that could end up being a pretty juicy heal. If you book it out, it goes up to like a 30% heal. It's one of the best heals actually in the game for your whole team. But I do still feel like there should be something more to it. Like, I don't know, cleanse a debuff off your whole team. Increase buffs by another um, you know, another turn. Like, it just feels like put maybe a 20% shield on as well. Like, just feels like there should be something else to make this a really legendary type of ability. We then got the A3. Books to a three-turn cooldown. And at three turns, it's actually kind of solid. So if you book it, 100% chance of placing a sleep. This is basically a Sand Devil mechanic. Yeah, that Outside of Arena and Sand Devil, it's not that impactful. But for Sand Devil, you do need to sleep before you start doing all of your damage. This could be... And, and the fact that it's placing a sleep means that she doesn't have any affinity where it's a problem for Sand Devil specifically, which is quite cool. Also, again, books do 100% chance of putting decreased speed and decrease attack out there as well. This is all single target stuff. So if this was an AOE, my estimations of her go up a ton. But because it's single target, it's like, well, where are we gonna use it? Sand Devil for sure. So a sleep and then two debuffs means you're gonna do more damage. And again, because they're all placing, you're not doing hits, which means that you've still got your full amount of hits available on the Sand Devil before he wakes up. So that's actually quite cool. You can't do stuff like put Brimstone on her because she doesn't actually hit. She doesn't hit with this. She doesn't hit with this. So the only time you'd ever proc a Brimstone would be her A1, which feels like it's kind of a waste, especially if you get that five-star soul. You can't put stuff like Poison Gear on, so you can't get more debuffs than, than, you, want, than you will originally here for Sand Devil, but this is quite good. Outside of Sand Devil, decreased speed and decreased attack might be quite good against Spider. Maybe the sleep obviously won't work. Might be okay against Ice Golem, but Ice Golem, I'd imagine if you run her auto, she's going to do this on ads unless the ads are dead. These two debuffs against the actual Ice Golem are both very good. So, you know, Sintranos stuff, it might be quite useful. It says here as well, debuffs placed by this skill will ignore any block debuffs. So I guess if you take Amius as an example of an annoying boss to beat, if somehow he gets blocked debuffs because of something you've done, then being able to put decreased attack and decreased speed on him is quite good. You won't be able to sleep him. I don't know. Just feels like the A3 is good. It should have been an AoE in my opinion. And then we've got this passive. So deals 3% more damage to targets for each debuff placed by this champion. So that's against the Sand Devil, that's going to be 3, which is 9% more damage. It's not bad. Again, as I say, it's a shame that... In a way, it's a shame that this part isn't a hit. Because if this was a hit, you could have got poisons on with a poison set. You could have got brimstone away, which would give a lot more value to this skill. But because it's not a hit, it's always going to be three. Uh, do you even see the sleep debuff? I guess you must do. 
So it's, it's always going to be three, which is 9% more damage in Sand Devil. And then in somewhere like Hydra, the heal is good. But again, because this is not AoE, you're getting a couple of debuffs away somewhere. So on that particular hedge, you might do some more damage. Just feels like if this was a, an AoE, then this gets a lot more value. This becomes a great steal in a lot of content of the game. And then suddenly we've got a champion that everyone really wants to use. As it is, her kit for me is like solely Sand Devil. Like if you're an early game player and you just started playing the game, okay, you might use her early on in Clan Boss as your healer and someone who's going to help you with decrease attack. But the problem for me is because she's not really anything other than a specialist in Sand Devil, I'm like, do I want to invest the books? It's a, you know, for anyone who's playing the game, you've got four, seven, 11 books, which is a lot if it's just for one specific area of the game, especially when, like, if you're an early game player, Sand Devil's kind of irrelevant. Late game player, Sand Devil becomes way more relevant. In fact, it becomes a must do piece of content. So for that, they, you know, Raid have kind of pitched her as an early game champ. I'd say she's more of a late game champ, personally. That's, that's my view. And then if, if she's a late game champ, it's like, well, are you already just doing a very consistent Godseeker type setup? And if you are, I don't know that you change it up unless you can go from Godseeker two to three minute type of runs to, uh, you know, one of these 30 second type runs. Then it makes a lot of sense. Uh, but those teams are way more difficult to build. So uh, I don't know, guys. It's definitely not the best uh, login champion that I've ever seen. That, that's what I'd say. She does have an accuracy aura. I guess if we're talking about picking up a blessing for her, because we're definitely getting one, right? And um, yeah, you might decide that something like Intimidating Presence is good, where you get more value from your aura. So you even get more value out of an accuracy aura, which could be pretty good, actually. She's got 60 already. Now, if you're getting her to like a, a five-star soul, then you get an extra 15% out of the aura. Plus, you're getting all of these extra stats as well. That's still good. But outside of that... You know, the natural one I'd normally tell people to go for is Brimstone, but she only hits with her A1. Therefore, it's like, what content are you running her in where you need that Brimstone? And it could be some Doom Tower bosses, I guess, where, you know, 60% chance of placing Protected Smite. That's valuable in any content. And then you're kind of running her as a healer, I guess. And maybe you wouldn't even... Or maybe you'd use the A3 as like a decrease attack, decrease speed on, I don't know, someone like a Soraf or someone like... um who else maybe? I don't even know who else. But yeah, it's um, it's, it's definitely challenging. It's challenging to know which of the blessings would be really valuable on her. And I'd say there's not many. There's not many of the top tier ones. You know, you might even run Miracle Heal, but then you're already kind of doing this anyway. So I don't know if it would even double stack. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, in terms of blessings, she's not, for me, it's not obvious. It's not obvious at all because, um, you know, because I don't feel like she's an arena champion and therefore... It's like what's left if you're not really doing any hits. Okay, then. so for this video, I'm just going to concentrate on Sand Devil because I really don't feel like she's useful outside of Sand Devil. Um, and I will say a skill A3 gives you three debuffs on the Sand Devil, which actually reduces the amount of defense the Sand Devil has, which means you're going to hit harder. And obviously, she's doing the sleep as well. So she's probably best in slot for this role now. With the exception of maybe Sifi, Sifi has got an irresistible sleep, which means you won't get the 3% chance that this just doesn't land. But outside of that, she's probably best in slot because she does have, when booked, and you have to book her for this, she does have a 100% chance to sleep, and she brings two more debuffs, which means that she's going to drop the enemy's defense. Muck Stalker, who is a freebie, by the way, and a rare, <laughs> and farmable, and super cheap to book, also does a 100% sleep, but he will have affinity issues because, uh, you know, in terms of matchups, because he does have to hit to sleep. So, you know, Muck Stalker, albeit um, way cheaper and, and efficient and stuff, is he's not as good as Adeline. Just bear that in mind. But I will say, unless you book her, she's not that good either, right? Because you've got 25% chance, one in four, that this just doesn't work. So let me show you what this looks like for an early game player. And if you're an early game player and you're not trying to push, you're just trying to get like your daily quest done, I'd suggest stage seven is the place to be. I've brought Adeline in at a couple of hundred odd speed and I've put her in all perception gear so she gets accuracy to do stuff. 
that's really how I would say she should be built anyway. Just, just pretty quick of accuracy. Um, I've then got Spider a bit slower for more debuffs. I've got Taurus for more debuffs. And then Whisper, Saf's favorite champion, is going to do all of my damage. My Whisper's built 100% crit, crit damage, attack. You probably haven't got a champion that's built as well as that if you're early game, and therefore you use two damage dealers. But uh, let's just show you how this runs. doesn't matter that she's the wrong affinity for this because her affinity does not matter. And you see she places sleep. We get debuffs out, which means Whisper can start to unleash. And then Whisper will start to do some damage. He takes a couple more naps. The heal actually does remove all of the uh, enemy, what do you call it? The um, damaged HP, you know, like the burnt out HP. And at stage seven, this boss doesn't really do enough damage to worry us. But we do rely on Adeline actually taking him to sleep. Like if Adeline does not hit that 25%, um, then, you know, we're basically in trouble. And then it's just relying on your DPS to get the damage done before he brings enough damage to you. So unbooked a five turn cooldown on that sleep. I mean, you can see this is actually a kind of, I've, I've done it way easier than this before. This is a kind of dreadful run. The sleep was missed there. Yeah, and actually it's going to fail. So this one's a fail because actually because Spider didn't land his drop defense. There you go. That's a, that's probably another fail. She missed her sleep. So you can see the problem here. Unbooked, she's kind of useless. Fail, didn't land it. I want to be as honest in these uh, like appraisals as I can. Unbooked, kind of useless. But this is a situation where we should now win because we actually did land the drop defense. Therefore, Whisper gets to unleash in the right sort of way. And she starts having extra turns and she starts doing tons of damage. But again, you're relying on someone in your squad that's going to be a good DPSer. And now, you know, we start to get a heal away and stuff, but we've got no... Because he's already such low health, Whisper should be able to get the job done before we're dead. You can see her A1. Oh, no, that's her A3 there. Her A1 will not land these debuffs back through the, the Sand Devil's um, phase when he's not asleep. So her A1 is actually basically useless. So that's the best case I can see for a low-level player using Adeline. And, and I think it's kind of trash, which means that you do have to book her. Now, I will say for most people, you only need to book her until you get this up to 100%, I think. So... It could be, oh my God, <laughs> insane. So it could be two books like that, or it could be nine books, right? But I've actually landed the 100% now. So I don't, I mean, I don't really need this. I don't need any more here. The cooldowns, I'm just wondering if you might need cooldowns for later stages, but at least this is going to unlock now the 100% sleep ability, which is what we want. And I feel like the only way she then gets into future teams is if she is your kind of like go first champion. Now, she will land decreased speed, which means that compared to like a Sifi, you don't need quite as much speed in like your remaining champions that are going to go, which is quite a big uh, plus against Sifi, I guess. You know, you're going to, with Sifi, you're, with both of them, you're going to have to open out with like for highest level Sand Devil, 271 speed, I think it is. I'll, I'll change her up in a minute. But then, yeah, your follow-on champions won't need to be quite as quick. And you'll still need to go through that same type of routine of, you probably would just do, if you're going for like mid-game to end-game, you'd probably use Adeline into a Lydia. Lydia will give you two more debuffs, which are the ones you want, drop defense and weaken if you've got her. Spider's not a bad substitute. And then you still bring your DPS in behind that. So I guess let's show like the mid-game push. You know what's sad? Like the more <laughs> the more I'm testing her, the more I feel like she just completely sucks. Um, look, I can do so. I've built a team here. The, the crazy thing is, I could show you this team. I can show you the same team would work on like 25. I don't have my second. Or do I have my second newt on the test server? I don't think I do. No, he's not come over yet. So you know, a double newt team is going to be the fastest team you can do on stage 25. Basically, taking out a Krizia and putting newt in. She would be a good opener for that. She's basically a super late game champion. That's that's and that's her only role that I can think makes any sort of sense for her whatsoever. Is a team like this where 
you basically go in and smash up the Sand Devil, and she's still got a 3% chance to fail, and there's other champions that can just do this already probably better than she does it. And you need her backed by all of these kind of like insane legendaries like your Newts, like your um, Kaimars, you know, a ton of champions that perhaps you... And this is stage 16, actually. Why is my Chrissy not max HP in? Anyway, hopefully you get the idea. She can do this type of team. But I've just got to say, like, Raid, if you watch this one, she needs a buff today. She needs a buff today. She sucks. She is probably now the worst legendary in the game. With one very niche, very end game role. That's all she's got. She sucks as a free champion. Absolutely sucks. I can't even stress it enough. I feel like she totally sucks. I, I cannot think of another place that she's remotely worth trying. Uh, she's worse than most epics in the game. So, like, okay. So, uh, in fact, don't end negatively like that. What should we do, Raid? Let me tell you. What could we do to change this immediately? This is an AoE. Suddenly, if this is an AoE, she's relevant in tons more content and she doesn't suck anymore. If this had some level of cleanse for your team, suddenly she doesn't suck anymore. But she needs both of those things. She really needs both of those things. And then potentially this needs to be a higher number as well, like 5%. So three things to make her actually a legendary. Otherwise, she completely sucks. And um, she is not worth your books. The only way she's worth your books if you are super late game. Like for me, she actually might be useful for my Sand Devil team. For me. But still, I'm probably going to use Seafy instead because she's more reliable. I think she sucks.